Hello, this is Kevin Cosby, pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. I want to talk to you about trauma. Trauma. Trauma uh, is something that all of us will experience, or we will know someone who will experience trauma at some time. The Bible is the book of life because it speaks what life speaks, and it often talks about people who are experiencing trauma. I think what motivated me to want to talk about trauma was because I have, I have been contacted by some very wonderful people whose life has been plunged into trauma. Trauma. Psalm 69, verses 1, 2, and 3 talks about trauma. Here's a person who's experiencing trauma. Listen to what this writer says. God, God, save me. I am in over my head. Don't forget that. That's what trauma is. I'm in something that is over my head. Quicksand and under me, swamp water over me. I'm going down for the third time. You're in a desperate situation. That's trauma. I'm hoarse from calling for help. Blurry eyed from searching the sky for God. In other words, there's no help. There's no remedy. That's trauma. Trauma. So he's saying basically three things. Trauma is, first of all, suffering. He's suffering. We don't know specifically what it is, but it's, it's very traumatic for him because he says he's over, it's, it, it's something that is over his head. So he's suffering. And then there's supplication. He's calling on God. He's calling for help. And there seems to be no answer to his trauma. The good news about this writer is this. I've given you two S words, as you can tell. There's suffering, supplication. But eventually, he moves from his trauma to get his song. So he starts, he, he actually moves beyond trauma, which is what I hope this teaching will help us to do. And this is what he says. That's the third S word. The first S word was suffering. The second S word, he, he was suffering over his head, supplication. He says that uh, I'm hoarse from calling for help. So he's calling for help. But here's the good word. And that is verse 30 says, let me shout God's name with pr a praising song. So he's suffering. He has suffered. He's supplicating, calling on God and others for help. And eventually, not in the first three verses, but by the time we get to verse 30 and to the end of this psalm, he's celebrating. He's singing a song, and that's where you want to be. You want to, you want to get your song back, and trauma can steal your song. Now, what's the difference between a crisis and trauma? <laughs> uh, 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 trauma is a crisis on steroids. See, a crisis is this. This is what a crisis is. A crisis is when something distressful has happened that challenges your normal coping mechanism. It, you're being challenged by it, but you're still dealing, you're able to handle the crisis because you have coping mechanisms that have been challenged, but you still basically are handling it. A trauma is different. Trauma does not challenge your coping mechanisms. Trauma overwhelms your coping mechanism. Notice what he says again. Uh, I'm in over my head, quicksand under my feet, swamp water all over me. In other words, it, problems are coming in every direction and he is overwhelmed by it. And life can bring us some traumatic situations that our, our, our normal coping mechanisms just shut down. I've, as a pastor for 41 years of pastoring, I have counseled people, talked to people who've experienced tremendous trauma from violence, from violence to rape, to uh, the death of a child to children who wanted to commit suicide because they were being bullied at school. Are you experiencing some trauma? Well, let me show you how to get from suffering and supplication to your song, because you want to sing again. You want to get out of the quicksand. First of all, don't do life by yourself. Accept 
help from others. I can't emphasize the importance of why you need to be a part of some support group in your church. Don't do life by yourself. Because usually when we're in trauma, be careful, you'll start doing this. Insulate, isolate, insulate, isolate, insulate, isolate. Insulate so you can't feel anything. Nobody can say anything to you because you're insulated. Isolate, remove yourself from people. That's the one thing you don't want to do. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4 says, He comforts us in all, all our troubles so that we can comfort others. So we can comfort others. God comforts us so we can comfort others. We, when they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given to us. So God comforts us so that we will be in a position to comfort other people. If you're experiencing something traumatic, don't insulate, isolate, accept support from others. Two, when you're in trauma, don't focus on your feelings, focus on what is true. Because when you're in trauma, sometimes your mind will tell you all kinds of things. And you have to focus not on what you're feeling, but what is on true, what is true. The Apostle Paul experienced some trauma. He talks about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And notice what he says. We thank you all to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble or trauma we went through in, in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed. Remember I told you that trauma is when your coping ne mechanisms are overwhelmed. So he, he says we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability. Our normal coping mechanism shut down. We didn't have the ability to deal with it, the ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. And when, you, when you've got a trauma, something traumatic, let me tell you what your mind is telling you. you. You might as well end it. You'll never get through this bullying. That's why some kids commit suicide, because they, there's no hope. We can never get through this. But that's how they're feeling. And when you're experiencing trauma, you cannot focus on your feelings. You have to focus on the truth. Yes, you can get through it. You shall know the truth, not your feelings. You shall know the truth, Jesus said, and the truth shall set you free. Accept support from others. Don't insulate and isolate. Don't focus on your feelings. Focus on the truth. And then use your energy. Listen to me carefully. Use the energy that God has given you, not for revenge, but for recovery. You only have so much emotional energy. And if someone has plunged your life into trauma, you've got a choice. Am I going to use my emotions for revenge or am I going to use my emotions for recovery? Focus on getting better. Focus on recovery because you will either get bitter or you'll get better. And the difference between bitter and better is the letter I. Bitter has the letter I in it, which is the word's way of saying, I determine whether I'm going to be bitter. I determine whether I'm going to be better. I know one thing, that when you hold on to what people do to you, then you allow them to continue to hurt you because you're holding on to it. It's called res resentment. So accept a support group. Don't isolate and don't insulate. Focus on what's true and not your feelings. Use your energy, not for revenge, but for recovery. And then fourth, trust that God can help you and get you through. Notice we said the trauma is what? It overwhelms your coping mechanism, but nothing can overwhelm the power of God. I can't. God, you never said I could. You can, and you always said you would. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 says this. God says, and God is saying this to you today, for I know the plans I have for you. Baby, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what the trauma is. God, in the name of Jesus, still has plans for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good 
not for disaster, not for trauma, to give you future and to give you hope. I don't care what traumatic experience you have ex had in your life, God has hope for you and God has a future for you. Now we're gonna continue this theme of trauma tomorrow and I hope you'll pass this teaching on to someone else and invite someone to be with us tomorrow because we're gonna to continue to talk about how do we help someone that we love that is experiencing trauma. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we have crises and it challenges our coping mechanism and we move on. But we have trauma that overwhelms them. And we don't move on, we move to you because nothing can overwhelm your power. Oh Lord, I pray that you will bless the people who are experiencing suffering. And I pray, Lord, that their suffering and supplication will one day become a song. Seal these words into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us for another powerful point to ponder. We are spending every day for the rest of our lives meaningful moments with the master. May the Lord bless you real good. And don't forget to stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, during this COVID-19 season, stay home. Be blessed.